Good afternoon. So this lesson, which is titled the comparison test for improper integrals, is usually taught in the same lesson with improper integrals, you know, the stuff that we covered last time. But I want to take my time to go over this uh, concept in more details, not because it's difficult, uh, but on the contrary, because it's actually a very simple concept. Um, the, its applications may not be easy all the time, but the concept itself is actually quite easy. If you um, put the effort to actually understand what it says. And the reason I want to spend more time on it is because there will be some properties related to infinite series that we will talk about next uh, time, I mean in a short while, which are similar to this comparison test. And it's important to understand how this works so that you avoid unnecessary mistakes or difficulties uh, and even frustrations when it comes to series. So. Difficulty usually relies on the fact that people try to guess if they don't understand the definition. Most of the problems with infinite series, and the reason I'm going to take a digression for a moment now, most of the frustration students have with infinite series is because uh, they don't put the effort to make, uh, to make sure they understand the definitions and the properties, to really, really understand what they actually state. Because once you pass that step, then the applications of these properties or tests as they are called for um, infinite series is not really difficult in most of the cases and in terms of how much you have to write on paper is very little as well often so without further ado let's actually go over one example and then i'm going to talk about what uh, the comparison test for improper integral is all about and just to make it clear from the beginning the motivation for this test is what do we do if we have an integral that we cannot compute, which can happen obviously in practice, um, in real life, lots of times. And by the way, pause the video and sketch this figure if you didn't do that already. And then let's continue with the discussion here. So often, even though we may not be able to compute an integral, we can at least decide whether it converges or not. And in many applications, that's quite a lot or, that's, or it could be enough for the purposes of that problem. Knowing, for instance, that an improper integral converges, that means we can approximate it maybe with computer algebra systems. But anyway, it's a big deal if we can actually uh, determine whether it converges or not, even though we may not be able to compute that integral explicitly. So let's go over one related example before we state what the comparison test says, because the comparison test is very short, very quick. It's not a lot to, to actually um, write when we describe the test itself. But I want to go over this example with uh, involving these three functions that I showed here in this, um, in this graph. So y equals e to the x, y equals x, and y equals 1 over x. Just to emphasize that when you compare quantities that approach in the limit infinity, you can make some estimations based on some inequalities in a very precise way. So you can't always decide essentially limits uh, that go to infinity based on inequalities unless they, these inequalities are in a specific order. So. We look at these three graphs and for simplicity, let's actually uh, restrict ourselves to the domain x greater than one. So you look at these three graphs um, from one to infinity, basically. And it should be obvious that, I mean, we know already from the graphs and from what we learned in calculus before, we know that from one to infinity, right, for x greater than one, these three functions are in this relationship. E to the x is the biggest one, and, and all of them are positive. I mean, all of them are um, positive functions for x greater than 1. So e to the x is greater than x, x is greater than 1 over x on, on this domain. Now, clearly, all three of them go to infinity. So from the graph, if I ask you to compute the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the x, that's the same as the limit as x goes to infinity of x. That's the same as the limit as goes to x goes to infinity of 1 over, excuse me, not, not 1 over x. 
So the first two go to infinity, not the, not the third one. So clearly to the x and x as functions, as x goes to infinity, they approach infinity. But obviously, although we call these limits, both of them infinity, please resist the urge to think of infinity as an actual real number, right? Because the two infinities have different properties. Clearly from the graph, e to the x goes to infinity much, much faster than x goes to infinity. So if I told you, for example, let's say I told you that e to the x is greater than x, and imagine that you, you know nothing about e to the x. Let's imagine you don't even know how the graph looks like. If I tell you that x goes to infinity, as x goes to infinity, obviously, then it must follow that e to the x goes to infinity. There's no other option. So if you have a quantity greater than something that already goes to infinity, clearly a greater quantity must go to infinity as well. So please pause the video and maybe rewind it and go over what I just said one more time in your mind to make sure you understand the logic of it. Because it, if it doesn't feel very natural, that means there's simply some misunderstanding and that we, we must discuss maybe during the office hours. So the key thing, e to the x is just an example. The key thing is that if I told you that you have some functions that you have nothing, I no, no idea what it looks like, but if I told you that that function is greater than x on the interval one infinity, so some interval, some positive interval, and you know already obviously that x goes to infinity, it must follow that the limit of f of x as x goes to infinity is also infinity. In a naive way of writing it, you could say that greater than infinity is infinity. It must be infinity. There's no, I mean, there's a, there's no other option for a quantity greater than another quantity that goes to infinity. So, and of course, with the example that we have here with e to the x, x and one over x, I mean, one over x, I'll talk about that in a minute, but with e to the x and x, we see clearly why that's the case. You know, functions go to infinity, but at different speed if you want, right? I mean, e to the x obviously grows to infinity, uh, goes to infinity much, much faster. And by the way, there are actually functions that go to infinity even slower than x. In fact, the, the example that all calculus students should have in mind, because this is very, very useful to estimate limits as well, is the comparison between exponential x or any polynomial for that matter, I mean any power of x, um, and uh, the natural log, any natural power of x I meant, and natural log. These are functions which are in this relationship, if x is greater than 0, e to the x is greater than x, greater than ln of x, all go to infinity. But, uh, but of course, ln of x goes to infinity much, much slower than x or e to the x. So from this type of inequality greater than infinity we can conclude something, we can conclude that that quantity goes to infinity as well. Now here's another important remark before we move on to, to the actual comparison test. If the inequality is in reverse, if you have something less than infinity, we can't say anything. There is no conclusion that can be made if the inequality is in the other direction. And I hope the original figure, the figure you have on the left corner, emphasizes this, this thing. Let's say you know that e to the x goes to infinity, and then I give you a function which is less than e to the x. Can you conclude something about the limit of f of x? And the answer is a resounding no. Because less than infinity could be another quantity that goes to infinity slower, or could be a quantity that basically approaches a finite number. There is simply no conclusion that can be made if we have a quantity that is less than another one that goes to infinity. And the figure here gives you a quick uh, counterexample to that, right? X is less than e to the x, both go to infinity. 
on the other hand, one over x over the same interval, one infinity, is less than one to the x, e to the x, yet one over x goes to zero. Right, so there is no conclusion that can be made from the uh, inequality in another direction. So from now on, when we, when we talk about comparison tests, and we'll talk about that in the context of series, go back to the definition, I mean, to the property, the way we stated it, and make sure you use it in the precise way it's stated. If the inequality is in incorrect order, then the test cannot be applied. And at all times, use your intuition because that's really the fail-safe device, really the intuition, right? I mean, um, it should feel natural that something that's greater than infinity can only be infinity. It should be also natural that a quantity less than infinity, that something that goes to infinity, can be many things. It, we can conclude that it goes or go, does not go to infinity. So I hope uh, this is clear, and uh, if that's the se that's the case, let's move on to the second page with the actual comparison test for improper integrals. All right. So the comparison test states the following. So suppose we have two functions, positive functions. This is for positive functions on their domain for x greater than or equal to a. So we're looking at functions defined on a positive interval from a to infinity. Uh, and then we have essentially two versions of the test. Uh, let's see. So if the integral from a to infinity of g of x dx is divergent. Divergent means that the limit is infinity or doesn't exist, right? I mean, for practical purposes, just to use your intuition, you know, associate the word divergent with infinity, basically. So if the integral is divergent, then the integral of g is divergent, and the integral of a to infinity of f of x dx is divergent as well. It's what we discussed before. Look at, pay attention to the uh, direction of the inequality. If the lower quantity, g of x, goes to infinity, I mean, it's integral. So if the integral of g of x is divergent, a greater quantity, the integral of f, will be divergent as well. The other way around, we can't say anything. If the integral of f will be divergent, we can't say anything about the integral of g. The test says exactly what I just wrote and nothing more and nothing else. And the second version of it is with convergence. So if the bigger quantity, uh, which is f of x, is convergent, so if the integral from a to f of f of x dx is convergent, basically it's a finite number, then the integral from a to infinity of g of x dx must be convergent as well. This is the same type of argument we used before in a previous um, previous example. If you have a larger quantity that approaches a finite number, the lower quantity can't go to infinity. It must approach a finite number. Uh, because we talked about the improper integrals in terms of areas of um, shapes of infinite size. Now, if you imagine, for example, this is A, and you have the two functions like that, right? So um, f of x is the bigger one, g of x is the smaller one. The second version of the um, comparison test, this one here with the convergence, simply states that, you know, if the bigger area that in, in fact encapsulates the, the smaller one, right? So the integral of f is bigger than the integral of g. So if the larger area is a finite number, the smaller area, the one that is underneath, the one corresponding to g of x that I'm emphasizing now, must be a finite number as well. It can go to infinity if it sits uh, less than a quantity that approaches a finite number. Now, as I said before, the application of this uh, test sometimes is difficult because it may involve tricky inequalities. But for the purpose of our class, if I ask you to do this test, I mean to apply the test, it will be with uh, functions that are easy to choose when it comes to coming up with these inequalities. 
Um, the trick is to basically try to guess just looking at the function on how whether the function will the integral will converge or not. And here we can you could use some um, uh, tricks that you learn from calculus uh, one in terms of the uh, dominating powers of polynomials. And we'll talk about more tricks like that when we move on to series, infinite series. But here, uh, here is a quick example. So suppose I want to decide if the integral from 2 to infinity of 1 over x third plus x plus 1 dx is convergent or divergent. Now, this is where the difficulty lies because you kind of have to guess and then try to prove using the comparison test if, if you if you want to use the comparison test because for example if you suspect that it's divergent then you need to find larger uh, let's see you need to find a um, smaller uh, integral that is divergent right you need to find a smaller look at the top of the page here you need some other smaller function that is divergent to conclude that the larger one is divergent as well so if you suspect convergence then you need to find a larger <clears throat> integral that is convergent a larger integral that you can compute so when you look at the function like this which by the way we cannot find the integral it's difficult to compute the integral in in its format here you should think about a function which is kind of close to this but simpler in, for the purpose of integration and usually the trick is to compare it with the function that involves only the leading terms. That's one of the tricks when, when you have uh, rational fractions involved. For other types of functions, is, there's no clear rule if you want. But in this case, we just basically compare 1 over x third plus x plus 1 with 1 over x third. And once you establish the relationship, then you can see if the um, comparison test can be applied or, as, or not. So which one is greater? Well, x is greater than 2 because the domain of integration is 2 infinity. So all of these are positive numbers. The fraction with a larger denominator is smaller. So the relationship between these two is less than or equal to. From this moment, the comparison test can be applied only. So can we can apply the comparison test only if the integral from 2 to infinity of 1 over x third is convergent. Because if it's divergent, we cannot conclude anything. So then we have to find maybe a different function, or maybe it's divergent, then we'll need to find the inequality in the other direction. Okay, with practice, you will know beforehand that it's going to converge just because of the power of x, the magic thing is that the power of x is greater than 1. That's that's the, the little trick there. We will, we will get to that a little bit later. For now, let's actually check this, this integral. So we don't know how to compute this, but we establish this inequality. Let's see if the integral on the right-hand side converges or not. That's a simple power rule, x to the minus 3 plus 1 over minus 3 plus 1 between 2 and infinity. And we could do this in proper integrals by using infinity bounds. Remember, when you plug in infinity, you're actually taking the limit as x goes to infinity of the antiderivative, which is, let's see if I simplify that, that's minus 1 over 2. x to the minus 2 is 1 over x squared. And then minus quantity, and I'll plug in 2. 1 over 2 squared. As x goes to infinity, this is 1 over infinity, so that goes to 0. And this becomes minus minus 1 over 8. So it converges, which means by comparison test, the integral from 2 to infinity over 1 of 1 over x third plus x plus 1 
converges as well. We don't know again what that integral is. We just know that it converges because it happens to be less than another improper integral that converges as, that converges as well. So uh, let's actually go over an example in the other direction. How do we use the comparison test, for instance, if you have um, when you have a divergent in the end integral. So let's say another example, let's say I want to figure out if the integral from 2 to infinity of 1 over cube root of x squared minus 1. Again, that's a positive function on the interval to infinity. And again, to anticipate a little bit, you might notice that the dominating power of x is actually 2 over 3. If you look at just the dominating term, just the leading term, x squared under the cube root, if you write it as a power, that's x to the 2 over 3. Quantities like that, when the leading terms uh, have power less than 1, suggest usually that the integral is divergent. So because I'm suspecting divergence, the correct usage of the comparison test is to pick the original function and compare it with an easier one in the other direction, greater than or equal to. So again, the, the, the typical trick is to look at the associated function that involves only the leading terms, because that, that will be an easy uh, function to compute, I mean, to, to integrate. What is the direction of the inequality? Well, x squared minus 1 is going to be less than x squared. A smaller denominator means a larger fraction, right, if the terms are positive. So that means the direction of the inequality is this way. So can only apply the comparison test only if the integral on the right-hand side is divergent. If it's not, it's not the right function to compare it with, or maybe it's not divergent, right? I mean, that's the, that's the important take-home message, right? I mean, the inequality direction gives you um, basically how you can apply the comparison test. So only if this is divergent, right? Otherwise, it won't work. So I'm trying to figure out, um, I'm trying to, to basically get a lower function, a smaller one that still um, goes to infinity. I mean, the integral goes to infinity. So let's see if indeed that diverges. So I'm going to take the integral from 2 to infinity of the comparing function. And we write that as a power to integrate. So that's minus 2 over 3 plus 1, 1 over minus 2 over 3 plus 1 between 2 and infinity. 1 minus 2 over 3 is 1 third. So 1 over 1 third, that's 3x to the 1 third to an infinity. So that's the limit as x goes to infinity, 3 cube root of x when you plug in infinity. And then when you plug in 2, that's minus 3 times 2 to the 1 third, or 3 cube root of 2. In any case, the radical goes to infinity. Okay, As x goes to infinity, cube root of x goes to infinity, so the whole thing goes to infinity. And by comparison test, then the integral from 2 to infinity of the original uh, must be divergent as well. Okay, at this point, sometimes students keep on being asking themselves, how do I guess convergence or divergence so that I can pick the inequality in the right direction? There is no simple answer to that. Like I said before, when you deal with fra rational fractions, typically the dominating power tells you uh, ahead of time whether it's divergent or convergent, and you just can confirm it by comparing the original function with uh, the one that involves leading coefficients, because that's easier to integrate. There are exceptions to this. Sometimes you need to do more trickier inequalities, but we're not going to deal with that. The important thing is to understand how the test works so that we can use it later when we move on to infinite series. So 
that concludes the topic on improper integral, but we will see improper integrals in the context of series later. So that's it for today.